गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स फ्रेंड्स आई एम योर असिस्टेंट टीचर मिस्टर अनिल कुमार फाइन वेलकम यू बैक टू द ज्ञान ज्योति ऑनलाइन क्लासेस स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट द रिलीजियस डिबेट्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सोशल रिफॉर्मर्स लाइक संत कबीर सूरदास गुरु नानक सो दैट वॉज आवर टॉपिक बट टूडे स्टूडेंट्स वील स्टडी ए न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर नाइन the flowering of regional cultures flowering means students springing up of the flourishing of new cultures students what do you mean by the word culture have we ever imagine that every day we talk about culture caste custom traditions what are they students culture actually is an idea taken up by us from from where students from the different traditions from different customs which we have possessed from our four fathers okay students so what uh, what is the type of uh, food we eat what is the type of uh, dress we wear what is the type of uh, talk we behave what is the type of uh, different customs so this is the culture and it differs from place to place and person to person also okay students it means that the culture which we follow in odisha it may not be the same in chatisgarh or in gujarat Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand, West Bengal. So it differs from place to place, as I have told you, students. The moment we think of people from a particular region, the first thing we try to relate with them in their language, <coughs> students, is true. Uh, the moment we think about, suppose we think about Chhattisgarh. So is Chhattisgarh? Chhattisgarh is students is first of all is a dialect. It's not a language, but Odia is a language. So uh, can we relate? uh with the, both these languages both these uh, dialect languages no but can you relate hindi with chatisgarh but some uh, words are taken from hindi because it is a dialect it's not a it doesn't have a script the moment we come across a person from tamil nadu we immediately think of tamil language a person from meghalaya we think of uh, garo khasi they may be a tribal people i think so after that we we'll relate with them uh, with their dressing style food habits their festivals dance acts etc etc so we can say that each region in our country each region in our country has its own distinct language literature food dance and music its true students every place has their own identity the de- historical development of the country has brought the people of diverse regions together and has led to the people of um, the growth of a common culture through uh, different uh, types like students uh, through different mediums i can say their food habits their culture wardrobe their uh, dressing style their standard of living so everything differs therefore students different regions during different periods have played significant role by setting a new trend and influencing cultures in other parts of the country actually it would be wrong to say that india's culture existed from times immemorial rather it evolved over the time because of various influences and is still changing gradually students during the medieval period a number of regional cultures students first of all we want to i will make one statement what is the meaning of regional means kshetriya locally okay odisha is it called as western part of odisha means this is a region then students these were marked by the growth of regional languages and literature and all these uh, changes like the uh, languages literature dancing music painting they played an important role in uh, flourishing different regional cultures students next all these cultures have been maintaining their regional identity yet all these are part of composite indian culture because these all are part of indian culture having different regions having different functions but the first sub topic student here is languages and literature what are they in the chapter covering of indian culture we read about languages and literature because it plays a very important role what type of language what type of literature they follow where the people educated or not what type of education they were getting so these were the different types of things we will study in this chapter students before the arrival of turks afghans and persians sanskrit was the core language 
in north india students we know subsidy is one of the oldest language in our country but when the turks per uh, persians and arabian came uh, then persian was made the old language arabic was language of scholars however sanskrit also had been retained as a language of literary exercises among the hindus because the hindu people they uh, get education in sanskrit language several works of literature were produced in both persian and sanskrit during medieval period therefore sanskrit was retained once again as a uh, language of existence during the 7th century c the bhakti movement originated in south india i have told you that how bhakti movement and sufi movement started in the earlier class that is the in the chapter of religious debates the saivites saints means the persons the saints who worship shiva as their lord spread their message of love and peace in the local languages they spread a message in the local languages the rise of bhakti movement aided the growth of various regional languages like in south india uh, tamil telugu and kannada malayalam these are the four major languages still spoken in our four to five uh, south indian states okay students this flourished then students important works of literature were written in these languages like the ramayana was translated into tamil by kamban ramayana kamban was writer then students the next is tikala kamban was a writer who uh, translated ramayana in tamil and tikala translated mahabharata into telugu so other notable Uh, literature works by Thiruvallur's Thirukkul, written in Tamil, dealing with the various aspects of life and religion, and Amulya Kattayada by Krishna Devaraja in Telugu. The influence of Jainism is should not be uh, disregarded. So it is unmistakable in the early Kannada works of Pampa, Pona, and Rana, known as the three gems of early Kannada literature. Students, the unmistakable in kannada literature and the pampa kona pampa kona and ravana all the three gems the gems in kannada literature adi purana santi purana and ajit purana the three works were written by this respectively are based on the life of the tirthankaras of jainism students adi purana then santi purana and ajit purana there are the three uh, works written by this respectively on based of life of various tirthankaras of jainism students tirthankar means the religious gurus the religious uh, reformers of the jain jain religion Yes, students. The bhakti saints from Mahabharata that were Sant Janeshwar, Tukaram, Namdev are credited with the popularity and growth of Marathi language. Students, in the uh, previous chapter, uh, the subtopic was popular saints of Maharashtra. We have studied about Janeshwar, Sant Janeshwar, Tukaram, and Namdev. They are written in Marathi language. Marathi came to be used as a court language in some of the Deccan Sultanate because Marathi was a local language of that area. So this became the a uh, court language of the deccan sultanate apart from these several other other indian languages like uh, uh, punjabi emerged in the north gujarati in western india bengali in eastern india odia in odisha assamese in assam and sindhi in sindh so these were the languages which influenced which uh, evolved in that time of history all these languages developed out of upper brahmosa and prakrit language and dialects this is the most important One. So, how these languages evolved? One is Prakrit and Upper Brahmosa. So, 
this one students upper brahmas and prakrit languages and dialects upper brahmas literally means something which is broken or crude it means It means something broken or crooked. Then uh, and refer to the local language of the people as against the classical Sanskrit. Sanskrit so Sanskrit was a classical language. Still, it is also a classical language, which was the language of the scholars of the Brahmins. Only the Brahmins means uh, the upper caste people. Brahmins were the upper caste people who taught the people uh, of the lower classes they in the. In uh, education, also in religious rituals, also it was in all Sanskrit. Okay, students. Next is students. Music. Students. Uh, in the particular topics culture, there is a sub topic called music because music plays a very important role in changing cultures, in differentiating cultures. So, what are what is music students? You all know. India has a very rich tradition of music, both folk and classical. Folk means students, folk Sangeet, especially uh, which is. Uh, relevant in the village area some particular people they uh, play the music or they follow it but classically students uh, the uh, language uh, sorry the music will be prevalent in uh, south india so uh, there were two types of music first one is hindustani north india Second one is Carnatic, South India. The music is divided into two parts. The main focus in Carnatic style is on vocal music, singing. Carnatic music is usually performed by a small group of musicians, having a principal performer, a vocalist, a violin, a melodic accompaniment, especially a violin is there. Then a rhythm accompaniment, usually a mridangam and tambura. Other instruments used in the performance may include the ghatam, veena and flute. So this is all about the Carnatic style. So this is more about vocal, vocal means singing. But Hindustani music is different. It is popular in North India. It was influenced by the lot of Middle East traditions. Students will study about the Hindustani music. That what is the Hindustani music. Okay students. So, so it was influenced by a lot in the Middle Eastern traditions which came to India with the advent of Turks and Mughals. Then the main forms of Hindustani music are Dhrupad, Dhumar, the third one is students. Dhamar, Ayar, then Shred, the next is Tumri, Dhadra, the next is Tapa. Shred, Amir Khusro, Invented a new popular style of music that is called Kavali. Students, have you seen Kavali? Kavali means uh, associated with the Dargahs. Dargahs means students, uh, mosque, masjid. He also introduced Khayal and Kumri as new forms of Hindustani classical music. Students, this is the new forms of Hindustani classical music. The uh, first one is Dhrupad, Dhamar, Khayal, Kumri, Dhadra, and Thapa. Students, what is Kavali? Kavali means students, there are two, there are two groups of people. They uh, sing songs or they have some type of competitions especially in uh, Dargahs and Havis this is Islamic culture which was invented by Amir Khosrow. The musical instruments which gradually evolved were used during the period. They are known as stringed instrument means they have some wires, ta, in Hindi we can say ta, so that are sita, sarod, sadangi and santu. Percussion instruments like mridangam, pakhwaj and tabla and wind instruments means which uh, need air, wind, you know, that is called Basuri, Nandaswaram, Sehnai. So there are, there are lots of instruments. So this is the instrument which are using, 
it is not new it is uh, used thousands of years ago it has already been invented okay students the next uh, is dance form we will study it about dance form students the next is students dance so you know dance you uh, you know how to dance one but there are dancing forms there are different dancing forms classical dance performance in india were traditionally performed in temples and were based on religious themes with time dancers moved on to the out of the temples receiving the royal patronage means they were dancing in the kingdoms of the various kings they were getting support from them most of the dancers of india developed on themes revolving around radha and krishna in the accompaniment of music this performing arts are generally understood to have two categories the first one is the classical dance form and so the next is folk folk dance i have told you lok sangeet okay friends the next is uh, we'll study is the, the indian classical dances usually have certain features like the use of mudra or hand gestures mudra means the style by the artist to narrate a story students sometimes a story is narrated in the form of a dance and they have a facial expression different facial expressions by which they show their uh, expression it may be mm, the adbhuta means you are surprising you know, the anger the sadness the dangers the happier so these are the different types of uh mudras okay students then next the navarasa so the nine different moods that was experienced because of four different emotions okay students then uh, it may be ra rasa or hasya rasa means the the performer is very happy but when it is bhaya it means the performer is full of uh, fearful mood and so on okay students then the pre existing dance form flourished alongside new forms and the forms that came to be categorized categorized means differentiated classified are as the kathak from north india students kathak is a dance form of north india you have to study it very closely then bharatanatyam from tamil nadu bharatanatyam as the name suggests then kathakali from kerala odissi from our our own state odisha kuchipudi from andhra pradesh manipur manipuri from manipur and satriya dance of assam students we have some local dances in chatisgadi also you may have seen okay then students one dance form we are going to study that is called the kathak kathak students what is kathak what is kathak students kathak derives its name from a sanskrit word means stories obviously students you know kathak it means stories kathak means stories the kathaks were originally a group of storytellers in temples of north india who used to tell the stories using gestures or food movement they tried to tell the stories in the form of dance or food movement that is called dance usually students it is very obvious that if you dance you have to move your foot then they also incorporated songs and local musical instruments to make the performance more effective students if a uh, person okay whatever let us take the example of you if you just only dance without any music without any uh, song then how it will look when it will go to it will baseless therefore uh, they introduced the uh, issue use of music and different instruments kathak began evolving into a distinct mode of dance with the spread of the bhakti movement the legends of radha krishna were performed in four plays called the rasa leela which combined folk dance with the basic gestures of the kathak story tellers students the dance was done in the form of uh, storytelling and music instruments were also used and foot movements were also done then kathak gained more importance under the mughal rulers especially students the mughal rulers they got the royal patronage and the royal support when it became a court dance slowly and gradually there were three distinct schools of kathak in lucknow jaipur and banaras so three distinct schools of kathak in lucknow 
जयपुर एंड बनारस लखनऊ जयपुर एंड बनारस थ्री डिफरेंट स्कूल्स ऑफ कथक वर डन देन स्टूडेंट्स विल स्टडी अबाउट द फोक डांसेस will move to the next of topic that is the folk dance that means folk means people that means you know nrutya folk nrutya in hindi it is say as folk nrutya okay so then every region of india has a unique form of dance reflecting its own rural features tribal regions have their own tribal dances too okay its two students uh, in uh, the if you move to the tribal areas you can see their uh, local dances folk dances are simple dances and art performed by the dancers to express their features to express their uh, their mood they may be joy they may be celebrating a occasion to celebrate the arrival of seasons birth of a child and wedding or festivals so these were the different types of uh, different types of folk dances so in some of the folk dances of various regions of india are The mask dance of Ladakh. Mask means students wearing a mask. The lepcha dance of Sikkim, chakri dance of Kashmir, wangala dance of Meghalaya, chang dance of. Let me write some dances. Chang dance of Meghalaya. Then tamasha of Maharashtra. Friends, you know what are paintings? In India, the painting tradition has uh, been very long. It continued during the medieval era. During the time when the painting was mainly institutions of Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist religious literature, the Mughals introduced the art of miniature painting. Means, friends, which was a new concept in the Indian art. What was miniature painting? Many means small. The small size miniatures were extremely detailed work produced on paper. cloth or slabs of ivory adopting the materialistic aspects of the coat life as its theme such as hunting scenes then uh, royal processions and darbar scenes humayun brought two great persian artists that is mir sayed ali the next next one is friends abdus samad okay friends this is very easy abdus samad which him to india they incorporated persian and indian elements in their art and introduced the miniature painting the most important work of the art produced during the period was hasmanama it means it consisted of nearly 1200 paintings drawn in gold and vivid colors there were 1200 paintings vivid means very few very fine color the decline of the mughal dynasty in the 18th century as we know students the after the declaration of mughal emperor british started to rule in our country so it resulted with the withdrawal of court patronage of paintings it forced the artists to seek new patrons in the newly created states of hyderabad bengal and awadh so uh, the paintings culture was highly flourishing during the mughal rule but after the declaration it also declined the rajput rulers of rajasthan also patronized the painters seeking support from them two of the most important schools of painting were emerged in the later times were the rajasthani and the pahadi schools students these were the two most important schools the rajasthani 
and pahari. I sign in the pahari schools of painting. The subject of the paintings of these schools were drawn from the epics, myths, legends, and love things. The source of inspiration was the Vaishnava traditions, means the people following Lord Vishnu. Then, students, next is cultural developments in Bengal. How? Next up topic is cultural. Students, why Bengal has been uh, given so much importance, we will study that. In the beginning of the medieval period, Bengal was being ruled by the palace who promoted Hinduism as well as Buddhism. The Muslims under the leadership of Bhaktiya or Khilji, he was a member of the Khilji dynasty, entered Bengal as a royal power in the beginning of the 13th century. Although he failed to bring Bengal under his control, the expedition managed to defeat Lakshmana Sena, one of the great Hindu, British Hindu rulers. Then, Students, what happened? The Hindu states continued to exist in the southern and eastern parts of Bengal till the 1450s, such as the Deva dynasty. Also, the Ganesha dynasty began with the Raja Ganesha in the 1414 AD, but his successors converted him to Islam. And gradually, students, what happened? The Muslim social structure developed in Bengal. In 1586 AD, Akbar conquered Bengal and Persian was introduced as the Court language or the language of administration. I have told you uh, after the advent of the Turks, Persians, uh, Persian was uh, introduced as a court language. Then Bengal's trade and wealth impressed the Mughals so much that they called the region as a paradise of the nation. So Bengal was given more importance during the uh, Mughal or after the Mughal rule also. Then also Britishers also had a much much interest in Bengal. So, Next subtopic is the growth of a region, regional language in Bengal. Growth of the Sanskrit was the language used in Bengali during ancient times. In Bengal, sorry, not Bengali students, in Bengal. But under the Palas, the text composed by the Buddhist priests were mainly Prakrit. Students, Prakrit was the local language. Sanskrit was the language of the scholars, I have told you. Then, the mixture of Sanskrit and Prakrit developed as we know the earliest form of Bengali language. Students, this is very important. The mixture of Sanskrit and Prakrit. This made the formation of Bengali language. This made the formation of Bengali language. Because the Pala kings introduced it, this is their local language that is called the Palas. So, even after the Persian became the official language of Bengal under the Mughals, Bengali remained in use and went to include a wide range of Persian and Arabic words. Then students, last is, students, the last subtopic in our chapter, the flowering of regional cultures is the architecture, temples and mosques. Students, as I have told you that the art of making a building or monument you can say, that is called the uh, technique of architecture or the concept of architecture. In the previous chapter, we studied about different types of temples, Nagara style, Visara style, okay students, Dravidian style. But here we study about the temples and mosques prevalent in the uh, Indian, Indian history. A Muslim architecture became quite developed in the age of the Sultans of Bengal. Some examples are the Dakhil Darwaja of Gaur, the Kotwali Darwaja and the Chota Sona Masjid. Students, the Muslim architecture is quietly influenced by the Turkish, Afghanis and the Persian architecture in our prevalent in our country and how the monuments were being made. The Mughal architecture especially. During the medieval period, many temples and mosques were built in Bengal. The main feature of the medieval Bengali architecture was the use of burnt bricks and terracotta as the building material. Students, how the monuments were being, the burnt bricks, how the bricks were being made, burnt and the terracotta. From the late 15th century, from the late 15th century, a number of temples were constructed in Bengal. 
So what were they? The typical Bengali style of temple architecture had a four roofed structure. Friends, have you ever been to uh, Bengal? Which Bengal? You can see that from the 15th century a number of temples were constructed in Bengal. The typical Bengali style of temple architecture and a four roofed structure. Four roofs. There were four roofs. Where the common, but typically it was being made there. The temples were usually built on a square platform. The outer walls of many temples were decorated with paintings, ornamental tiles of terracotta tablets, and the interior of the temples were very simple. A good example is the Zor Bangla Temple in Vishnupur, located in Pampura district of West Bengal. Shouldn't the Zor Bangla Temple situated in the place called Vishnupur? In the Bangura, Bangura district, sorry, students. Bangura is the name of the district in West Bengal, is one of the examples. The craft people of Bengal were very skilled in making pottery, plates, knives, scissors, etc. etc. High quality paper was made from the barks of trees. Seafaring vessels were also built in the building factories. Silver coins were used as a currency for buying and selling of goods in the Bengal. Uh, in the Bengal kingdoms, the craftsmen were very high skilled. Okay, students. Then, students, the last is. So, students, this was the chapter all about the flowering of regional cultures. Students, in this chapter, we studied about the different dance forms, classical dance, folk dances, painting, different types of paintings being evolved in the medieval era, the music, the different types of musical instruments being evolved or being invented. At that time, just to what we are still using, the architecture, the temples, mosques. So, this was the whole topic all about. Students, I hope you would have understood the video, understood the lesson. Students, I have always said you that while you are watching this video, please refer to your textbook. If not, it will be uh, very difficult for you to understand the topic. So, students, by saying this, I may say goodbye to all of you. Thank you, students. Have a nice day. Stay home, stay safe.